Um, okay, Melissa, thank you. We're going to be talking a little bit about the Family Advocate Program. Yes. Okay. So I'm kind of going to go over the Family Advocate Program, and I'll get a little bit into what Community Connection also offers as far as everything else. I don't want to give it all right now because it's going to be in a PowerPoint right here twice, and I'm sure it's going to be annoying, but we'll definitely get there. Let me share my screen. Okay, so um, Karen Superintendent of Schools, I am the family advocate. My name is Justine Garcia. Community Connection for Child Care. Community Connection for Child Care is a child development and family services agency dedicated to providing options, education, and support to children, families, and child development professionals in the community. These are our resources and for hours. We are known as an R&R &R department. We are open from Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5 p.m. We're located on 2000 K Street, Suite 110 in Bakersfield, California. Community Connection for Child Care. Let us help find your child care. You can call or be provided with a high quality care access child care referral at any time on CCC, meaning um, if families need a provider list with child care as far as at home uh, providers or a child care location, we can offer you guys a list of child care facilities, even if you do not receive a community connection. Um, you can find everything on our CCC 4 seeds website, um, online calendars. We offer trainings, workshops, child development resources. We have newsletter, newsletters and early child care education. Um, also looking help for paying for child care. We offer alternate payment program, provides direct payments for child care, full or partial based on income and family size. Funds are limited. CalWORKS provides direct payment for CalWORK parents. Uh, we also offer um, emergency care for file for foster children. We offer the bridge program partners with Kern County Department of Human Services, qualifying resources for families and caregiver, caregivers. Um, we also want to start child care centers as far as licensing care in your home. We contact a resource and referral specialist on learning how to become <sighs> a licensed care specialist. Um, also, we offer a program which is called a child care food program, meaning if you uh, become a licensed care uh, sitter that we can help manage food for you in regards to taking care of the children. Interest in the workshops that help your offer high, high quality child care. Open the entire new community. Most workshops are free. Our workshops include early brain development, positive guide, running a child care business, and importance of play. So family advocates. Um, we did have two advocates, but one of our advocates did um, have, a, have a reason for leaving, but I am a new advocate advocating for families within 4Cs, child care providers, community, and schools work together in partnership with families to, to remove barriers that block enhancement of independence, safe, safety, and health of children at home, in school, and the community. Family advocates work within 4Cs and other agencies to identify and define family needs, link families to service providers, educate parents and individual service systems, and assist families in accessing need services. These are kind of our collaborations right here of who we work with. We work with a lot of organizations within the Kern County um, really goes far. We're really trying to expand uh, just a lot of family referrals within different uh, counties here. Um, a lot of our referrals are based on housing assistance, food assistance, and safety. This is kind of a gist of what it kind of goes under, kind of categorized. And these are additional referrals that we do offer health, immunization, dental services, legal assistance, employment, uh, mental health, counseling, substance abuse, clothing, parenting, education, disability for parent or child with special education. This is just some data. Um, we're fairly new. We're barely been here for about a year and a half now as a family advocate. This is a fairly new position, and this is just some data of how we have increased within just a year form. Uh, we are broken down for when a family advocate does help out a family. We have it broken down in phase one. Phase one is um, a really high risk of resource, meaning if a family needs food assistance, housing, utilities, law enforcement, transportation, homelessness, rent relief, ethic. There's phase two, which is as far as legal assistance, immigration, financial assistance, 
therapy, counseling, employment, mental health, counseling, substance abuse, parenting information, education, health immunization, and dental disability, et cetera. Phase three is closing our service. Um, just because we do not have to offer you any kind of referrals doesn't mean we will just completely let you go. You are able to come back and ask for a resource if needed. Um, we do link them to referrals and advocate for them. At the end of our resource, we do provide the families with a toolkit services, meaning uh, just a little bit of paperwork with them to just in case they need more information on the resources that we were given to them, just like a survival kit. Uh, the Family Toolbox is created with tools and resources for the family. The Family Toolbox is a way of working together, prioritizing and building confidence with skills so they can be successful. And that's kind of all I have. Oh, my God. Thank you, Justine. Does anybody have any questions for Justine on the Family Advocate Program? Or even uh, the Community Connection as well as far as child care for uh, families in Kern County. I, I understand that um, the, the wait list for the Community Connections program is pretty extensive. Um, is there like an approximate um, timeline on when somebody receives a, a yes or a no once they apply? Um, how does that work? When the really the, the breakdown of it, it's a grant funded program, right? And it's really ranked on the family's size and income and the hierarchy and need. That's how they are placed in the list. Um, that list, so when a person does apply, it can take up to 12 to eight weeks to receive a letter stating that you have been selected to receive it with the ranking number. But even with your ranking number, it doesn't justify that you're going to get community connection as soon as possible. It just puts you on the rate scale. So like right now, we are barely on number, I want to say 50. And then in two months, we're going to go from 50 to like maybe 70, who was ranked on that scale. It's just all a funded base. But the, um, the only faster pace that I've always told families, if they receive cash aid, not food stamps, because they'll kind of get it mixed up, but if they receive cash aid, they are placed higher in the ranking system so they can get help with immediate care. I see. Okay. Um, and with the Family Advocate Program, you do have to be part of Community Connections um, to work with the Family Advocate? You don't have to be. We're trying. Our main source is the, is the families that receive Community Connection or like the providers or anybody in general. But right now, we're really open up to the public just because it's a brand new department and we're trying to promote it a lot as well as pushing for um, community connections. So we're taking as many people right now as possible if they need resources from the family advocate position. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. I have a question. Is there like a scale where you're able to look online and see um, if you would qualify for reduced um child care or if it's free child care or like an approximate of how much you would have to come up with uh, on a monthly to pay for the child care? Yes, we do have, um, I don't believe it's on our website, but if you were to call us and let us know your family size and we can give you the right amount of where your family needs to lie as approximately of how much income they need to make monthly to be able to receive a community connection. We're able to provide you with that information. Oh, okay, so it's not something that we can find online and just give. No, to our just friends. because the sometimes the scale does um it does change. Recently, it did. They did make it a larger amount for families now, so it's a good thing. But they just haven't put it on the website. Oh, okay, thank you. I do have a question. If um, because I do work with a lot of parents, I'm a social worker, and I do refer a lot of parents to the community connection, um, program, um for them to qualify for the family advocate program is there a referral process or how would they get into your guys's program um they can either talk to their caseworker um from community connection and because they have the family assessment referral form and just let them know hey i may need more information as far as housing or utility assistance whatever their resource they need or they're able just to contact me directly and leave me a voicemail and i will get back to them as soon as possible Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have any other questions for Ms. Justine? 
Okay. Um, Norma, you said you sent the email over to Misty at first. Yeah. Okay. So I don't, I don't know how come it's not coming through, but, um, Paula, um, is going to share her screen. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're both on the Safe Surrender Baby, um, coalition. And, um, so thank you, Paula, for helping me out on this. Um, no problem. There is a Safe Surrender Baby law that you may or may not have heard of. And this is designed for um, to protect a mom's um, identity and privacy if she decides to safely surrender her baby. Um, if she's deciding for whatever reason that she can't parent, she can safely surrender at a fire station or um, a hospital within 72 hours of birth. Um, let's go to the next screen. And so, you know, we've all heard of um, that child being left in a dumpster. Um, this this would be a, a woman, a family in crisis. So in an alternative is to just surrender the baby and um, there's three main um, points to safe surrender. That's no shame, no blame, and no names. We can go to the next screen. So um, this is our family that was honored this year at our Safe Surrender Baby um, Proclamation. And they received this guy who's brave enough to be in the picture with them. And he was safely surrendered and placed directly with a family, in this case, the Davis family. And um, so all the babies are placed with a family who's already approved for adoption. Um, and so this is um, Nathan's picture in the hospital. And now let's go to the next um, screen. So what is the difference you may ask uh, between safe surrender, adoption and abandonment? Safe surrender is confidential. The baby's surrendered in a safe place. It protects the parent or legal guardian and they have 14 days to reclaim. So maybe by the 13th day, um, a woman decides, oh, I actually have more support than I thought I did, and I could parent this child. That's where you guys come in, like the family advocates, all of that um, wrapping around the family to give them the support. Adoption is permit, so safe surrender has to be within 72 hours. But what happens if a woman, you know, a month down the road decides, I can't do this? Um, she could still choose adoption, um, and the parental rights have to be terminated in that case. And she could, it could, okay, so there's foster care adoption and there's independent adoption. So foster care is the mom did something to harm the child. So um, the Department of Human Services is involved. Um, she can choose to make an adoption plan outside of human services for a private adoption. That's a different, um, a different plan. Um, CPS isn't involved. She can choose the parents that she wants to raise the child. They are background checked, and she, you know she can choose an into open adoption that way if she wants. And there's not a penalty, and not a case plan to follow like with DHS. Um, safe surrender. She doesn't have to 
have a case plan. There's no penalty, nothing. But she's not going to know who's raising the child. Then there's abandonment. That's extremely dangerous. And the birth mom can be prosecuted. Um, one more thing with safe surrender, let's say that she doesn't want her face shown. Um, she doesn't have to be the one, to, like if she gives birth at home and the baby's transported to the fire station or a hospital, it can be somebody else taking the baby there, whoever it is that is giving the baby over, handing the baby over, they are given a bracelet with numbers on it. And the, chi the child has the, the anklet on it. And whoever is coming to reclaim has to bring that bracelet with them. It can't be birth dad coming on the 13th day and saying, I heard my child was safely surrendered. There's no, there's no proof. We can go to the next slide. So who can, um, I was ahead of myself apparently, who can safely surrender the baby, the parent, legal guardian, or another lawful, uh, another person with lawful custody? And where to um, the hospital or a fire, fire station. They can't just put the baby on the doorstep of even either of these places. They have to hand the baby over. There are other states who have a safe surrender box and we've been seeing that in the news. Um, in um, California, we have to surrender to an individual. And if the mom is giving birth in the hospital, of course they can choose safely surrender, but they can't have been coerced. They have to come in saying, we want, we choose safely surrender. We can go to the next slide, Paula. So here's the process. The, the mom has to say, I want to safely surrender then the matching, matching bracelets are given. And there's a voluntary medical questionnaire that is given, it's not mandatory. A lot of times um, people don't fill it out because they're fearful it will tie them to, um, you know, that their name will be out there. Um, there. The parent or legal guardian is free to go. There's no questions asked. And then if, um, so whether it's the hospital or the fire station um, that the child is surrendered at, uh, then um, CPS is, in, is notified because whoever is approved as the adoptive parent for a safe surrender child is approved under Department of Human Services. This is not talking about independent adoption. Um, then the baby is examined and provided medical treatment as needed and placed in a foster home. And then there's that cooling off period. Um, the, the parent or legal guardian has um, 14 days to reclaim and that does happen. Not every time, but um, in fact, it's very few that reclaim, but a birth parent deserves that chance to, to recognize that they do have more support than they thought and, and go ahead and be able to parent their child. We can go to the next slide. Can they reclaim? Yes, they have to bring that bracelet and then um, CPS will identify, um, is this the correct bracelet? Has it been within those, um, within the 14 days? And um, then they'll double check and make sure if this child is going back, 
to um, birth mom, birth parents, is the situation going to be safe? If there's um, DV, domestic violence or drug use involved, then you know maybe the child goes into foster care or um, you know a case plan. They they need some supports if if there's extenuating circumstances going on. And then they cancel the court hearing that was set up, if it has been yet, for um, termination of parental rights. And we can go to the next slide. What happens after 14 days? Well, um, CP or child welfare um, does terminate parental rights. Um, it's more of a fast track because they don't have to terminate services first for birth parents. And the child um, from the beginning has been placed in an adoption approved home. And so then the child can move on toward adoption. Um, with any um, child, a, a, um, an adoption has to wait until the child has been in the home six months. And it's not like, oh, on that calendar day, that's when it can final. We still have to go through, you know, whenever it can be calendared, whenever they get the paperwork back from the state, all of that. But around six months, the adoption can be final. We can go to the next slide. This is very interesting. This is um, the number of safely surrendered babies. Um, you know, how many were um, reclaimed, how many safely surrendered, how many abandoned, um, how many survived abandonment, and how many um, were um, deceased as a result of the abandonment. And that is statewide, the first list. The second list is Kern County um, specific since we've been tracking. So you see like there, there are those foster parents who really want to adopt out of foster care. And maybe they think that it's less risky for the, you know, to take on a safe surrender child. But you see that there aren't that many, so it, it may be a long wait. All right, we can go to the next slide. We're gonna play this video for you. Let me know if you could hear the sound. We can't hear it. No, okay, let me see. Thank you, Paula. Excuse our te te technical difficulties here. Thank you. For new mothers, moments of crisis can lead to the unthinkable. But even then, there is hope. With Safe Surrender, you can safely surrender your newborn baby into the hands of any fire station or emergency room staff in Kern County. There is no shame. No blame, no names. Thank you, we can go to the next slide. And so here, if you want more information, um, here's where to find it. Also, um, if you guys want brochures for your office, there are these pamphlets that come in English and Spanish. And then there's these little like business card size um, cards that you can give out there. They're like a, a thicker card, kind of like a business card and it's English and Spanish as well. And it says there is an option, no shame, no blame, no names. Don't abandon your baby. You can safely surrender your newborn up to three days old into the hands of any fire station or emergency room staff in Kern County. And then it has a website and then a phone number on it. 
Any questions? Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much, Norma. I did have a question. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain uh, briefly the circumstances under which a parent can choose the um, adoptive family if they want, if they decide that they can't keep their baby? Yeah, so um, that would be a private or independent adoption. Let's say that it is, so safe surrender is, let me back up. Any adoption probably comes about because of a crisis, right? There, um, there's a pregnancy. Um, they don't. Have, they feel that they can't parent. Um, so they're choosing adoption. Safe surrender. You're walking away. Remember, no shame, no blame, no names. You don't know who is um going to end up with. The child. For some women, that's too scary for them. Maybe they want their friend to raise the kid, their aunt to raise the kid. Um, then they can choose um, who they want, or they can reach out to an adoption agency that may have profiles of families that they can look at and choose who they want to raise their children. Let's say it's their friend. Their friend is not, there, there are cases where the um, family member can adopt and doesn't have to pay for the investigation through state adoptions. And so if it's a foster care adoption, then it is through Kern County or you guys are close to LA County. They would be doing all the paperwork and all that. They would be acting as the attorney. So if you're a foster parent and you adopt, you're not paying thousands of dollars for the adoption. If you're doing a private adoption, then it is there there are fees um, and so an adoption service provider um meets with birth mom and says um if you have you know basically if you have more supports would it be helpful um if they're set on adoption then the adoption service provider or an adoption agency can um, have, help her sign all the documents that are needed for the state for it to be legal. And then um, meet with the adoptive parents too to sign the independent adoption agreement. Did I go off on a tangent or did I answer your no, question? No, no, definitely not. Um, thank you. Yes, that, that clears things up. Yes. Okay. If you have more questions, I'm happy to answer at any time if some situation comes up. Um, on the side, I am an adoption service provider, so I have worked with birth moms to make an adoption plan. I've also um, been called into the hospital to see, because there was a, a woman, she wasn't, un, um, she wasn't clear at first whether she wanted safe surrender or private adoption. So I came in with the hospital social worker to see um, what were the things that were important to her. And in that, in her specific situation, it wasn't important for her to um, have any contact later on. In a private adoption, you can have contact later on. In a safe surrender situation, there's no contact. You're not knowing where the baby is going to be. Thank so, you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. If nobody else has additional questions for Norma, 
Um, we have our final presentation from Melissa with CAPK about the VITA program, um, the voluntary tax preparation. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully I can pull it up. Are you able to see it? Yes, can you hear me well? Sorry, I'm a bit soft spoken, yes. so hopefully you can hear me. Okay. So hi, everyone. Again, my name is Melissa. I'll be talking about the Volunteer Income Tax okay. Assistance Program, yeah. also known as VITA. Um, so this is through CAPK. I know there's other agencies that also have their VITA program. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just that for our purposes, you know, it's provided through CAPK. So about VITA, so VITA is actually a program created by the IRS to provide uh, free tax preparation services to qualified individuals. We try to target individuals who earn less than $60,000, people who have disabilities, uh, people who know limited English. Um, I do want to clarify that although these are the people that we try to target, it's not the only people that we serve. Um, our services pretty much can be used by anyone other than people who have um, income through rental property. So in other words, if someone owns property and they rent it out and that's their source of income, that is outside of our scope. Unfortunately, we won't be able to help with that. But other than that, it really doesn't matter how much a person earns, they're able to file their taxes through our program. Um, and as you may notice, the word volunteer is on our name and that's because our program consists mainly of volunteers. Volunteers are required to take a uh, tax law training course and pass an exam. Um, um, one thing I do want to clarify, because sometimes people think like, oh, we say volunteers and they get scared to, I don't know, they, they make it seem like, you know, we just pick like random people to come into the office and do that. That's not the case. They do have to, like I said, take that training course. They have to pass the exam. And then also anyone who um, completes the tax return, so our volunteers, when they do a tax return, it is reviewed by one of the paid employees of CAFE, just to make sure that everything is done correctly. And so our program pretty much offers like free tax related services. So we can do like tax returns. Currently, we're able to go as far back as 2018. Um, we offer assistance with ITIN applications. ITIN is the individual taxpayer identification number. So this is for individuals who don't have a social security number, but would like to file a tax return. The IRS will provide them with this ITIN number. And this ITIN number can be used by adults and um, children. So we can help them apply for that. We can also help them renew it because it does expire, especially if they have gone years without doing a tax return, that ISIN will typically expire and they will have to reapply. Um, we also help responding to um, audits by the IRS or they receive any kind of letter, you know, explaining maybe why they didn't get their tax return, things like that. We can ex explain that to them. We can also help them like take action so they can get that corrected. And similarly, we also do like amendments so like if there's a, um, an issue with the previous tax return, we can correct that. <clears throat> or if there's like a credit that they missed out on the previous year and they think that they were eligible for, we can also amend that tax return just to see if they would actually be eligible to claim that credit. Um, we also currently are helping them to claim their federal stimulus payments. I know this is a bit old, but there are some people who didn't receive their 2020 or 2021 stimulus payments. So um, currently for 20... 20, they have until May of this year to still claim that credit. Um, they would require to file a tax return, but like I said, we can help them to file all their tax returns just so they can get that, so they can get that money back. And again, all of our services are free. So quickly, I just want to talk about two California credits. Obviously, there's many credits that people can be eligible for, you know, on the state side or on the federal side. Is these two, um, these are for individuals who earn pretty much like less than thirty, thirty-one thousand um, dollars The first one, the California Earned Income Tax Credit, um, this is based on income and family size. So depending on that, they can get a refund from between $285 up to like over $3,000. And because this is a California credit, individuals who are not um, U.S. citizens may also be eligible for and the other one, pretty similar, you know, income threshold, but this one does require that they have a child, at least one child under the age of six. The refund amount for this is up to like over $1,000. And again, um, the, the taxpayer or the dependent doesn't need to be a U.S. citizen. If they have an ITIN, they're eligible to claim this credit. 
And again, like I said, there's many other credits, but I just wanted to point these out because as you can see, like the income threshold is really like, you know, really is within like low income range families. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you work with low income families. So we're really trying to push these out because a lot of people uh, don't claim them. Like these are probably one of the two main credits that go unclaimed. And it's like millions of dollars that go, you know, unclaimed on tax returns. Mainly because some people think that because they didn't earn enough, they're not required, which may be true, but they might be missing out on these credits. And as you can see, they really go up to like thousands. So we really don't want them to miss out. So how to obtain our services? Firstly, there is no application or qualification process. Like I said earlier, we do try to target um, low income in, like individuals or families, but anyone is really much welcome to use our services. Appointments are required. Appointments are scheduled through 211. There are some sites that have like a different phone number maybe, but either way, if you call us, we'll give you that phone number. Um, we have various locations throughout Kern County. Um, even within Bakersville, we have like five or six. So our, our main office is on 19th Street. We are open year round. So if at some point someone needs like some kind of assistance related to their taxes after tax season is over, they can still stop by to our office. Um, unfortunately, this year we don't have a location in Fraser Park. I was told that we were supposed to. That's why I sent up to do this presentation so I can share the information. But I guess it was just like a misunderstanding. But um, if any of you in the communities would like to host a site for next year, feel free to reach out. My manager is really open to um, setting up locations anywhere in Kern County as long as um, you can provide us with the free space to do so. Um, but yeah, we have various locations again. Um, and if anyone was to use our services, they'll have to schedule an appointment through 211. And that's pretty much it, pretty simple. I hope I didn't go too quick, but you know, I wanna be mindful of everyone's time. No, oh, thank you so much. Does anybody have questions about Vida? I do, is, my, is it working? Can you guys yes. hear me? Yes, yes okay. I can hear you. Um, so if we wanted to be like a host spot, would we be able to do that um, if we gave you guys a space for next year um, or even in the coming future? Yeah, of course. So we yeah. actually partner with like other uh, family resource centers like here in the area. Okay. Um, like I said, as long as um, you're able to provide us with the space. I know sometimes we can also do like virtually, like maybe the clients will come into your office, but we would do like the services virtually. So that's like another area that we can explore. But yeah, I really want to push out to have like the site there in Neverton because mm -hmm. I don't think there's anywhere near close there. So so yeah, if you're interested in that, let me know um, and I can connect it with my manager. Um, I would love that. Do you think, um, do you think it'd be something we'd have to wait until next year to do? Or do you think like, if we got in connection with your manager, we could get something set up, um, like soon, even if it's like a day a week or something. Um, um, you mean like within this tax season still, or even just, yeah, like is that possible or would it be next year? It would probably be next year just because okay. we're already fully booked with sites. And then also, well, the tax deadline is on the 15th of April. Yeah. <laughs> and we already have like a lot of locations like just squeezed in so we can make sure we um, serve all of those areas before the deadline. Um, but who knows, maybe we can like go even like after tax season, like, I don't know, one day a month or something, or just like once, maybe awesome. later that month, just to like, if anything comes up. That would be but, great. Yeah. yeah, if we can get that information, um, we will definitely look into that to get that going. Yeah, of course. I put my email in the chat. Well, I can put it in there again and you want to reach out to me and then I'll forward that to my manager. Perfect. And hopefully something will pop up. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns, rants? No, I'm playing. No <laughs> rants. It's too early for that. If somebody were to reach out from a rural area, kind of like us, um, would the virtual... Um, option be available for this tax season if they dial 211 and try to set up like a virtual appointment? Uh, not necessarily, unless we have already agreed with a specific site that that's how we're going to deliver the services. But other than that, unfortunately, no, everything's pretty much in person. I know okay. during the pandemic, they did have like virtual, but for now it is in person. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. I know it's no. not very flexible, but... 
No, thank you so much. It's definitely a really good resource. And we have had questions about assistance for the taxes. Yeah, I can upload a flyer. Um, it will have like the information of the main office here, but the phone number is still the same where you can reach out to either schedule an appointment or ask like questions related to taxes. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Okay, um, so we are coming up to our round table. Does anybody have any events, any information um, coming up for their agency that they want to share? Hi, Doris. Yeah, go ahead. I think we're having a little trouble hearing you, Doris. We can't hear you, I'm sorry. Okay, how about now? Yes, there we go. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Doris Reyes from Kern County Public Health Department. Um, I have some really cool information coming to Fraser Park. Uh, we have our Know Your Numbers program um, coming to Fraser Park. Not anytime soon, uh, but it is coming. Let me share that flyer with you guys. Um, we are coming on starting May 15th from 12 to 1 at the Fraser Park Branch Library. Uh, well, it's a seven week program. Um, the first week we do the initial screening, which we check for cholesterol, uh, glucose, and blood, uh, blood pressure, um, just to get the foundation to see what your the numbers are or your numbers are. Uh, weeks two to six, we have uh, 30 minutes of exercise and or fitness classes with our fitness instructor. And their other 30 minutes are nutrition classes with our nutritionist. Um, and the final week, which would be the seventh week, we do the final health screening. Again, we check for the glucose, blood pressure, and um, um, cholesterol levels, just to see if like there's been any improvements on anything that uh, our community members um, who are interested in this uh, program, you know, if they've made any, if anything, if they've learned anything from like our program, hopefully they continue to, um, you know, create good habits on healthy eating and exercising. Um, so I'm going to drop the flyers um, or the flyer on the chat. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. This is a free program, by the way. Um, it's a completely free, um, oh, <laughs> uh, it's a complete, <laughs> it's a complete free program uh, for anyone in the community. So we will be in Fraser Park um, starting May 15th. And then every, I believe that's a Wednesday, May 15th. I could be wrong. Uh, yes, it's a Wednesday. So every Wednesday for seven weeks from 12 to 1 at the F Fraser Park Branch Library. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Yeah, I remember you guys coming out. That's a really good thing. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to share? Um, El Tajon, if I could for a minute. Hi, Corey. Hi. I just um, I wanted to let everybody know that we have a mobile dental clinic coming out um, and servicing the students. And we also have a clothing exchange right now going on. Um, a company called Young LA has, um, has sponsored my community school for the El Tajon. And so once every two months, they bring in about 600, 600 items, um, all brand new, still with tax. We do tell the kids we have to take the tax off so they don't try to resell the items. But um, it is, it's been really successful. The kids get to go shopping. We do it in a rotation. So half, um, half the kids got, or actually a third of the kids got to go last time. Another set will go next week. And then they should have some summer stuff before summer comes. Um, we are not having summer school this year at the middle school due to um, some plumbing that has to be redone on the whole site. Uh, the high school will be the only school holding it, and they will be holding just the algebra that they usually do in the summer. Um, there are a couple chances for some math summer camps, some STEM camps. Um, and then also, 
the Bakersfield Hospice has put on a summer camp for any student who has lost, has uh, suffered a loss, and it doesn't have to be this year. So um, it could be any time in their in their lifetime, and it's all free and it's a week long program. So we have a couple students that are partaking in that, but, but if there's anybody that um, wants to, I can add them to my registration. Um, it's still not too late to get in those forms for the uh, the dental clinic, and she'll be doing cleanings. And she'll be doing an assessment and she'll do a fluoride treatment and sealants, which if you have insurance that doesn't cover, it's not covered. Um, on, on my insurance, I had to pay for my son to have his teeth sealed as well as my daughter. So, um, but that's all free. And then if she sees anything that needs like an ongoing treatment kind of um, issue, she will refer and set up the arrangements with um, the the only provider that accepts medical in the area and then um so then we'll bust them to their appointments if they if that needs to happen um also we just got we did our one site we had 30 students who filled their um, vision test district wide and um and we took them down to bakersfield they had 28 kids left with glasses so out of the 30 28 needed prescription glasses so they were free and they were cute. I was a little jealous. So, um, so we have set up once a year that clinic. So anybody who needs glasses can get them on the spot. And then the nice thing is we'll get the prescription. So if they play a sport and break their glasses, we can order new ones online. Um, and then we are contracting with Clinica Sierra Vista to kind of do a mobile clinic for back to school. And, and for ongoing care for our students, uh, they are. We went. We went to Greenfield and watched their rollout uh, Monday and yesterday. And it it's, provides vaccines. It does um, the, the physical for sports, and then any other. Uh, there's an actual like little doctor's office. So we're thinking about doing a mental health one as well as just a regular uh, vaccines and back to school uh, physicals for sports. So that's all up and coming with the community school. We will find out if we get our community school grant in June. Uh, fingers crossed. I really need that grant to come through. But other than that, that's what we got going on at Elton Hill Unified. Thank you so much, Corey. That's awesome. Okay, um, really quickly, I would like to share some of our upcoming events here at the MCFRC. Um, we have been pretty busy with our Help Me Grow workshops these last few weeks. There's six in total, and um, we're coming up to the fourth one. It's every Wednesday. Um, for, it starts at 11. There's free child care, and we're um, touching on some important topics when it comes to parenting. I think the next ones that are coming up are on nutrition, emotional development, and physical activity. Um, please, uh, if you're interested, give us a call and we'll give you some more information. There's um, free childcare and lunch if you like to attend. And um, there's always a little something that we like to um, give our parents that pertains to the topic of the day. Um, we have also our open office coming up in April on the 8th. From 6 to 7.30, you're welcome to stop by, check out our office, meet all of us, meet our family advocates and um, our directors, and we are very excited for that. We are also um, holding a dental screening for first five children. That's coming up on the 24th of April, and we have appointments um, available from 11 to 3. If we see uh, a greater need, I think that there is also the possibility to um, have more times available. And we also have our kindness calendar that I will share um, with all of you. Uh, we It's our incentive for a big, give big card. Um, it's if you're able to complete the and the tasks right there on the calendar, they're fun things. Um, it, it'll really help out the MCFRC. Um, and I'll be sharing all of that with you guys um, as a follow-up. Thank you so much. Is anybody else have anything else to share? 
I do have an announcement um, for GBLA. I'm sorry, was somebody else about to speak? Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go okay. Um, so um, GBLA will be hosting its 11th annual Fair Housing um, Law Conference. Um, this normally is a huge turnout. Um, if individuals are interested in attending um, the housing conference, uh, just to give um, you all a little bit of background on it. Um, so our annual fair housing conference brings together residents, representatives of government and, you know, different community organizations, um, and they provide so much relevant information on housing providers, realtors, landlord, um, tenant laws, and whatnot. Um, and it's a really, really good um, conference. So it is free um, for all attendees who are interested. Again, this will be held Thursday, April 18th, 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Um, it's going to be held at the Marriott Hotel and Conference Center this year. And um, there will be a link uh, that will lead individuals to Eventbrite um, if you're interested in um, coming to this conference. Again, it is highly suggested um, that individuals who are interested uh, go ahead and register so that way they do have a reserve spot. Um, Cassie uh, was unavailable today, so I am filling in for her. Um, as soon as I get the flyer, I will um, send it, so that way you all have that as well. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, no problem. Hello, I'm Yadira from the Kern County Network for Children. So I did want to share that we are um, putting together the calendar for the April Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, we will have the uh, proclamation at the Board of Supervisors on April 9th, uh, basically proclaiming April as a Child Abuse Prevention Month. Uh, we do um, host different activities throughout the month, um, so I will be sending, um, we will be sending out the calendar with all these different events. One of the um, events that we do want to highlight is the um, virtual training that we will be uh, providing. Um, this training will be held on Thursday, April 18th, and it pertains to drug endangered children awareness and drug endangered children approach. Um, this training is held at, at between 8.30 and 12.30 p.m. So um, just letting everyone uh, know, a little heads up that it is virtual, so it will be um, facilitated that way um, everyone throughout Kern County is able to uh, join just be on the lookout we will also have podcast and um, talking about the different programs that are available um, throughout Kern County that um, support on uh, child abuse uh, prevention uh, in collaboration with the Department of Human Services Another thing that we're also doing is an art contest for those that are foster youth um, or former foster youth. Um, basically, if you know of any uh, foster youth uh, children that would like to submit their um, art drawing on who their hero um, is, uh, we will be um, picking out uh, some winners and um, DHS will be providing some prizes. I don't know exactly what they are just yet, um, but um, there will be prizes for that art contest. Uh, we will be displaying those um, art pieces on our social media and sharing them throughout, um, posting them within our uh, community. And Yadira, uh, so we have worked on prizes. The prizes so far are Condors tickets. We have a family pack to ice skating rink at the Ice Valley Center Children's Center. And then the third thing is the Boulevard, a family prize pack for a arcades game ticket and bowling for the family. So good, great prizes. <laughs> Awesome, Paula. Thank you for chiming in. <laughs> um, of course. But yes. Uh, so as you can hear, great prizes for this art contest. We do encourage those that um, are foster youth or former foster youth to uh, take advantage of this um, activity um, just to put a spotlight on, you know, who their hero is and, you know, showing uh, basically that uh, these individuals um, are, um, a big part of our community and we want to bring awareness to that. Um, so that is it for me.
Thank you. Thank you.